Hey guys, welcome to Overland Expo 2022. We're at Overland Expo West in Flagstaff. Corey, say hi. Say hi, Corey, to the camera. That's Frank. Frank, say hi. Outdoor by Four Magazine. Corey's here, we are setting up. Parnell, say hi. Hi. And Frank is gonna be here. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring some videos to you guys. Uh, so we're gonna go around and um, uh, check out vehicles, rigs, and all the new things. All right, let's do it. Hey guys, I'm here with Owen. He's working with Dometic. You just had a fantastic trip coming to the show, right? Uh, sure did. Yeah. It was very adventurous. Just yeah. real just real quick, hit a couple of bolt points. Where'd you go? Uh, well, first, you're coming from Seattle. Yeah. So, um, came down um, yeah, from Seattle to a Grand Canyon uh, very cool. trip. Um, yeah. Very about cool. About 300 miles of dirt. Really, really rough dirt in this. And everyone that's watching the yeah. video show right now is going to ask what we're what we're leaning on. We this is uh, I affectionately refer to uh, this as Sarge. Yeah. Sarge is a 1964 Series 2A. Cool. Uh, basically bone stock. Like I think it's the same shocks and springs that it was born with. It's rough. And the motor is it, the, the original, like 2.24. Yep. Like, just petrol, just. Yeah. How, how did Sarge do? Good. Right all, you on. always wonder with a car this old, but um, it is my daily driver in Seattle. Um, awesome. And uh, so the only way to keep an old car alive is to keep driving it. Yep. So yep. Um, <laughs> I, I it, can relate. Yeah, it does not happy on the highways, but just it, uh, happy on the dirt. I mean, yeah. it'll drive around the world at 40 miles an hour, but nothing over that. Right. So it won't go 45. Right. Yeah, it gets unhappy. <laughs> it will, but then no one's happy. But. Um, right on. But yeah, I've had this about 15 years and it's been uh, just a, you know, just labor of love. Well, yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it's gorgeous. I saw it when I was walking up and I was like, I got to check that yeah, out. So, um, Hey, we're talking about the yep. Dometic Go line. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about, clearly you got it loaded up, a yep. little bit about the, the purpose of the yep. Dometic Go line right. and a little bit about how you use it. So we set off by looking at about 30 different uh, cars and we had a matrix of the, the dimensions of these models. Uh, of the vehicles yep. and then modeled up all the gear and how it would pack in there. What usable space do we have to work when a product is in its packed form? And then we started moving from that. So, right. um, so the way I have this set up is, this one's a little upside down. So in the back of the car, we got the CFX3 here and then the table. In general, I put the table, like I've got a Range Rover Sport, which is also small cargo space. Right. Table goes down below, then that hard storage, which uh, we can look at, we'll go on top of that, soft sword, and everything cubes up and Tetris is right into the back of the car. Right. So it's like the best product, a full-size product, um, that'll still fit in the in a small payload. Right. So that was where we started. It, I mean, and you, you can see a, a few straps or however yeah. you have it, uh, however you have it anchored down. Yeah. You can anchor down this whole load, whole and if you get table. on the real bouncy stuff, mm -hmm. or God forbid something yeah. else happens, um, it, it's going to be secured. It's right. not going to be bouncing around. Give me the quick rundown, uh, giving us a quick rundown. What do you have back here? What's the list of gear? So <clears throat> I traveled in this car solo on this one. So I've got uh, one full size table. Yep. Um, and I got one full size chair. I brought an ex accessory bench, which is great for like just alternate, alternate seating, but I'll put the hard storage on top of that. Yep. Um, I got one soft storage. This is a 20 liter, we call this packed um, 20. Great. This has all my personal clothing in it. Um, and on this trip is the dustiest, maybe the dustiest is, trip I've yep. been on. That's and, awesome. And I was confident in that all my clothes at the end of the day were yep. clean. And it's open, you're, I mean, you're open air and traveling dirty. through the dust. <laughs> it, it was dirtier than I thought. So during the day I got so dirty that I realized I was gonna have to wear the same clothes every day. So every morning I had to put the dirty clothes on yeah. knowing I was only gonna use up all my clean clothes. So I put all my clean right. clothes back in and they would be safe. Yeah, right um, on. I also have got a smaller, uh, there's a 10 liter version of this, which is just half the size and that'll just be other um, gear. Um, and then I've got uh, water containers. On this trip, I carried, I carried two um, of their 11 liters yep. um, water containers. Um, in Right now, there's three in here, just 
someone put another one in there. Yeah. Um, and that gives me um, 22 liters of water great. Um, in there. And then I've got my uh, water faucet. To and that's great. So tell me how the water faucet works. How do you turn do it you off? Want, how do you, you want want to go there and look at it? So this thing yep. basically, this shape basically designed itself. It was, um, and what, when I was talking to earlier about taking a jerry can and splitting it in half, we did basically exactly that, is this here, is exactly the same depth of a jerry can and the same width of a jerry can. Oh, awesome. And when you stack two of them on top of each other, this is exactly the same height of a jerry can. So, Got when, it. so we just took that form factor and then like cut it in half. And we we're able to take instead of 20 liters or 10 liters and 10 liters, you now had 11 liters and 11 liters, which is 22 liters. And if you fill it to the top, there are actually 12 liters. There's one, there's an air, extra liter of airspace. So in a 20 liter, space you're actually carrying 24 liters and, oh, that's awesome. and this will fit into some uh, jerry can holders so those who are, um, have already committed to that jerry can space in their setup yep they can now carry two of these in that same space well so that's really great for people planning an upgrade right to know hey if you've been running a jerry can and you got space for that you got space for two of these and you're carrying more liquid exactly yeah that's awesome so that's great that's cool this is the water uh, faucet that I was talking about. Yep. And this just clicks right into that CPC fitting, okay. and it's self priming. Is I just give this a little double tap, and then it, it'll prime out, or it'll it'll prime itself. So pump the air out. Yep. And this give you water. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. And so this will pump at one liter a minute. It auto shuts off at one minute. So you can actually, if you want to set a pot like your teapot, right. turn it on, walk away. It'll be full when you're back. Got it. Um, or if you accidentally turn it on. You're not going to be out of water, but I think that about covers it. Cool. But but the, the goal yeah. of the Domenico was to complete it was to create a complete camp. Yep. Um, and so it was very comfortable without compromise. And this is very compact and efficient. Yeah. Very yeah. efficient build. This here. was yeah. and on this trip. I mean, even though the the road was rough, this was actually the most luxurious luxury trip I've ever personally yeah. been on or packed for. Right on. So very good. Oh, and thank you. Really yeah. appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, thanks great. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Are we rolling? Yep. Right on. Nathan, we love iCamper. Awesome. Yeah, so when did you guys get into the show? Are you just coming in hot just this morning or have you been here no, for a few I mean, days? No, we've been setting up for a couple yeah. days, but this is the first day, so I'd say we're fresh and ready to start. Right on, and with the wind that we have today, all of your gear is being put to the test. It is. Uh, <laughs> that's what Flagstaff is, I guess. <laughs> that's what Flagstaff um, is for. But hey, it shows it all, so that's cool. Right on. Uh, hey, let's take a look at a couple of things. Um, do you want to start with uh, your awning, your 270 awning? Yeah, so okay. it's called the ExoShell 270. Uh -huh. It's a 270 awning, like you said, but what's different about it is that it's an aluminum hard shell case. Um, cool. So most awnings are not yep. like that, so this has more durability yep. and gives you the 270 coverage. What do I got behind me here? Uh, so we have our new collection of tents. This yep. is the SkyCamp 3.0 Mini. This is the Xcover 2.0 Mini, but uh -huh. basically all our new lineup of tents, which have the new color schemes, but a lot of improvements as well. Right on. Do you want to highlight any of the improvements? Sure. Um, the biggest one I would say is the comfort and the spaciousness. Cool. So it looks the same from the outside or similar to our previous models, mm -hmm. but when you close it, you have a lot more space so you can keep your bedding inside. Nice. But we've also improved the mattress to a thicker nine zone mattress to give you additional comfort. Well, now I'm cozy, I'm not moving. I can stay here all day, is that all right? That's fine with me. <laughs> you might, you might get a little toasty, but yeah. Yeah, that's true. I'll get my hat. All right, what are we, what are we looking at here? This is awesome. So this is called the Disco Series. Uh -huh. It's a modular kitchen system. Um, I don't know if you can see both of these right now, but basically what it is, is a kitchen system that you can use with a burner right here yep. at different heights, but you can also remove the skillet and then you can cook it over a fire. Cool. The reason we have it at this height here, you can cook when you're sitting down, but this yep. just ho shows how small the tripod folds up. Right on. So this is the maximum yeah. height right here, and this is the minimum height. Yeah, okay, got it. That's a really good thing for you to point out. So this and that is the same tripod. This is the exact same, exact same, exact same, exact same tripod. tripod. Very, very cool. Um, so very when you're cool. cooking standing up, you probably want it a little bit lower than that. But yep. when you're cooking over the fire, you have it higher here so that the legs can spread wide enough over the fire. So I, I see this. I think, I think it's awesome. I don't know exactly where I would sleep, but one option is if the kids are annoying me, I can kick them out here away from my tent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so we're in the Annex Plus right now. Up above here, we have the SkyCamp 3.0. Very cool. That sleeps three to four people, mm -hmm. three adults or, you know, parents with their kids yeah. but 
as you can see, the Annex Plus is really large. And yeah. so if you have an extra guest, or like you said, you want some peace, maybe your dogs for a place to sleep, here the inner tent is an attachment to the Annex Plus. Yep. And here inside the inner tent, we have our RTT sleeper, which is our sleeping bag, and our RTT comfort, which is our self-inflating mattress. If it's raining outside and you're camping, you know, you don't want that to happen, but it yeah. does happen. You know, honestly, six people can easily sit down here and be cooking, and so you have a lot of space. Yep, that is awesome. Any other highlights that you'd like to mention real quick before we wrap up? Honestly, we have a lot going on. Yeah. Um, but, you know, our whole new series of tents, mm -hmm. the sleep systems, and yeah, 270 awning are the, the right biggest on. things right now. And people can run right over to iCamper.com, is that? iCamper.com yeah. is correct. Okay, right on to find out more. Great, awesome. thank you so much. Yeah, thank I really you. appreciate your time. Thank you very yeah. much. Right on. Okay, cool. Hey, you guys, I'm, I'm here with Adam, Step 22. Adam, we've known each other for a long yeah. time here, friends. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Great to see you. Yeah, we're super fans of, you. of your gear. Um, we use it right now in our door system. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal. Right um, you've got some great stuff that's in stock. And, yes. and some great innovative, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stock. Available. In stock is key, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. What are we looking at today? So this is the Chameleon Carry-All. Uh, now cool. we showed this last year. Yeah, we didn't have any available in stock, right? Because um, we we had just got the way that we wanted it to be done, so we had a few here. But now yeah. it's actually available to buy. Very so cool. uh, it it's a lot of people will use it for a camp kitchen. Bam. Yep. But we uh, we didn't put kitchen in the name because we didn't want people to think that's all it's good for. Right. It's super modular. Okay. So reef panels. So we also showed these last year. Yep. Right, Velcro yep. plus Molly married together as one. Yep. Super modular, and and the name is actually Reef. Okay. That's, that's the logo. I got a sticker for you there. You Very can take cool. that. Thank reef. you. So that's Thank the name you. of it. But this is actually a panel, right? Yep. So you can take that Reef panel off. You can mm -hmm. put a smaller Reef panel. You could put um, basically whatever you want that's hook and loop compatible up right. there. So it uh, it could be for toiletries. It could be tech. It could be radios. Yep. Um, again, camp kitchen. And then there's. Anyway, I just, I'm just yeah. noticing the form factor. You've got quite a little bit of storage in there to it, configure it how you want to. It, That's yeah, cool. there, there's a lot of room, and and pretty much every user is going to come up with their exact need. Yep. And on top of that, the next part is one trip, it's your kitchen. Yep. The next trip, it could be your junk drawer because you've got your <laughs> kitchen doing something else. Right? So right on. instead of taking your hat off and your keys and your phone and your knife and all that, this yep. could be kind of your junk drawer yep. um, with, you know, storing stuff down below here. What's nice is on the back side we do have Molly, uh -huh. and this is going to come with straps okay. and rings to hang it. Yep. So uh, when Great. you're traveling, you may store this somewhere else in your rig, yep. and then you get to where you're going, and it's quick and easy to set up. This is going to go over a roof rack, a tree branch, yep. just about anything. If you've got hooks, you can take these and hook that in. Very cool. Right? So it's it's super easy to use no matter where you are. Yeah, and I like the poles and everything too. Yeah, I mean, that's nice and stout and you can just grab onto it and unzip that. That's really cool. And at night, yeah. if there's a tracer in there that reflects with light. Oh, so if you've got cool. a headlamp or just a little bit of light and you don't know where your zippers are, these yep. are these are gonna stand out. Great. And with the T puller, it's super easy to get these down. Well, there's so much good thinking. I mean, one of the, one of the things I like about all your gear is there's so much thinking behind the design. I Thank mean, you. you just really Thank thought you. about yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So it takes us a little while to get stuff to market, yep. but, but the thing is, when we launch, we don't want you all saying, oh, this didn't, I Wouldn't had a problem, nice whatever, if, right? Yeah. We try to think of all that beforehand. Great. Reef awesome. panels, yep. right? These are awesome. So, yep, the, these are, it, it's hard because a lot of times when people see them, they don't get it. Yep. Oh, uh, Molly and, you know, hook and loop, and I'm not quite sure. So the idea is, before it used to be Molly, Molly panels we've all got, yep. or the hook and loop, Yep. right? Now that they're married together, you're not limited. So on the back side, you've got hook. Yep. So you could stick this to the uh, inside, the, uh, the wall of your camper, if it's hook and loop, compatible. You've also got Molly hook it, so you can hang it with the rings. And then you've got laser cut here, so you can weave it through like you would Molly. And then same thing on the front side, you can attach other items via Molly. But the really cool thing about this is the way that, uh, I call them kind of wings, are able to, 
be completely adjustable to yeah. whatever you want to store in it. So your visor on your rig, yeah, so right? You want your flashlight, you got your Bluetooth headset yeah. or whatever it is. And we did these horizontal. Yeah. So when you drop your visor, your stuff doesn't fall out. Right. If you've got a Stingray flat box, which now have loop on all four sides, oh, cool. you could throw a panel in there. So you can, your smaller items don't get lost in the black hole, yeah. right? It's, it's super it's endless. highly configurable, yeah. that's the deal. Yeah. Right? And, and that's I mean, gonna that's be really up to, cool. we think this is how, these are ways you could use it. Yeah. We know that you and a lot of you guys out there, once you get these, are gonna report back and go, look what I did, and I took cord and I weaved it through and I did and all this like, other stuff. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, awesome. what, that's what we designed it for, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right on, cool. Okay. Awesome gear, break it down here for we us. Are. Yeah, here we the are. The Tamron trunk, Yep. that, that rectangle shape. Um, number one, the design for this, breaker bars, camp kitchen, longer tools, odd shaped stuff, Yep. right? And then odd shape uh, when you're packing your rig, maybe you have that rear seat that leans back yep. and a tall box or something hits the top of the seat, creates that gap. Yep. You're able to fill that gap with this bag. Yeah, right on. Or even I, at the end, you've got that little spot you want to slide I'm something of a in. Spot, I'm thinking of a spot for this in the 80 right now. Okay. <laughs> I mean, tent stakes, yeah. a small chair that folds, anything like that. But like you see, we've got here a 10 Keeley. Yep. You could do 10 Keeleys. Mm -hmm. The packing cubes that I said are now available also, of course, fits the packing cubes. Um, and heavy duty coated nylon, two layers, back to back. Yep. This is just that gear bag that, that is, is awesome. Get it and go. For so that's the Tamron. Okay. Yep. This is the Rhino. This is that. This is the the big bag. This is a just lot the of big volume. Bag. Yeah. This is right. a lot, and it's very so, cool. It's roll top. We have mm -hmm. one rolled up here. The cool thing about this bag is the zippers start at the top and the back and come to the front mm -hmm. at the bottom. And what that does is it gives you this built-in work mat. Very cool. So if you want to yep. keep your gear, and again, I'm Lay showing it with recovery gear, but this could be sleeping bag, clothes, mm -hmm. just about anything you need. Um, riding boots, a helmet, if you're into you know that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, sports, built-in work mat. Keep your yep. gear off the dirt. Don't lose anything. It's also nice you see everything at once. Yeah. And loading in, loading out. Mm -hmm. If you've got a lighter load, it's roll top, so you roll it further. If you've yep. got a heavy load, you might only get one fold on that top. Right. Compression straps that on the really side. That is really cool. Yeah, just to, yeah, just just to demo that. Roll down. That, is, that is really awesome. Yeah. So it's, your load can vary. It's a yep. big bag, but you don't have to put a bunch of stuff in it. Awesome. Adam, can you talk to me about color fastness? Color fastness. Okay. Yep. So and that's one of the advantage of this coating, both in the Rhino and the Tamron. So yep. nylon, uh -huh. naturally, does, is not great for UV. Right. Right. But it's one of the best materials for bags. Yeah. Polyester yeah. is generally going to be uh, best for UV, right? right? But now we're losing some strengths and some stuff. The, and so the most common material for bags is going to be nylon. Yeah. So if you're looking for a bag that's going to be outside, roof rack, back of the truck, yeah. there are certain nylons, depending on how the color is put onto the threads. Yep. And that's a longer talk that maybe we can have at some <laughs> point, right? But, but that's good to know. And that's a lot, that's like for recovery gear. Yep. A nylon, which has more stretch, which is going to be for recovery, kinetic, right? Yep. Is not going to do as good as a polyester strap in the sun. Right. So that carries over to the bags. Mm -hmm. For the Rhino and the Tamron, this coating is going to help with UV. And sun, you probably know. <laughs> but uh, just to state the obvious, <laughs> yeah. it is brutal. It's brutal. I mean, you, the farmer's tan is real out here, yeah, right? Like it breaks just, down everything. And if you're in Australia, you know, it's just like... <laughs> Well, it's, and yeah, so with at right, Step yeah, 22, yeah. that's what we've done with a lot of the products and the recovery gear and everything yeah. is, is working with the mills directly. Uh -huh. um, our spare tire bag program, which is coming coming soon, Good. right? Yeah. Good. Right? Yeah. We're number one raw materials. Before design, before anything, is what are the materials going to be? Yep. Because that's got to be something. You see a lot of bags on the spare tires. They break down. They degrade. They start getting holes in them. Yeah, got to buy them over and over again. Yeah. Right? Getting that right material yep. out of the gate. And that for this meant to be used on the outside of a vehicle is key. Then you say, this is our materials. How can we build with them? Yep. And, and you know us, we are very, we are uh, not fans of buy and throw away yeah. at all. Yeah. Like it's just, it's bad for everything, right? So good it, materials, you know. Two things it's really bad for. Yeah. Number one and most important, the environment. Right. Trying to keep things out of landfills. Yep. Uh, and your pocket. Yeah. Right. Right. You, you might yeah. save money yeah. buying something that's lower quality, maybe not the right materials. 
But number one, that's going to end up in a landfill over yep. and over again. And by the time you spend that that lower retail price point multiple times, you're spending more you end in up, the long you, run anyway. Yeah. So that's part of what we've done with Step 22 in Great. raw materials. Now, a lot of companies are using materials that are made from reused goods, Yep. Um, trash, plastic, and stuff like that. Right. Um, and that's great for keeping that stuff out of the landfill, yeah. but those materials aren't quite there yet to get that super long life. Right. So, so while gonna... we're not using a lot of those, the materials yeah. that we are using, uh, which are raw, which are new, are the best of the best. Right. And so our goal is to keep our gear out of the landfill right. as long as we can. So it's a lifetime build. And we have, we have, we still have every piece of Step 22 gear we've ever bought. Right on. Yeah. Thank you. Adam, thank you, you very much. Thanks really for stopping it. in and yeah. thank you guys for watching. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. All right. Hey, all right, hiding from the wind. So we gotten some feedback on the kitchen that we need a leg at the end in order to hold it up. Uh, Parnell, when but you're I think- When you're cooking on it. When you're cooking on yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. But uh, Parnell, I think you could actually sit on that. What do you think? Oh, well, the software says this joint right here will hold 900 pounds before failure. And there's two of these. So in theory, that's the weakest point in the kitchen. So I should be able to put quite a bit of weight out here. Don't sit on my kitchen. Oh my God. Uh, so oh I, I'm, my think, God. I'm thinking you probably don't need a leg. <laughs> don't let me, you might need a new bumper, but you're not gonna need a leg. <laughs>
awesome. Cedar line closet to your left. Those two doors will latch together to make a changing area outside so that you have access to your clothes and a little bit of privacy. Very cool. Yeah, so with a vehicle like this, going outside and, and digging a hole, it doesn't fit. It's yeah. not, you. that would not be acceptable. It's not terrible, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Very cool. And lots of storage here, I see. Tons of storage. We're awesome. going to have our wine rack, which is one of our most popular options. <laughs> our quiet ride, so that's going to keep all of your plates, glasses, mugs, bowls, everything stationary and yep. quiet while you drive on those trails. Oh, absolutely. I see that, so it's not going to rattle around. That's very cool. A Keurig on the wall. Very cool. Well, super awesome. Ashley, thank you so much for sharing the, the Earth Roamer. Really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. So nice. All right. Yeah. Nice thank to meet you. So yeah. Much. Thank you. Hey you guys, I'm here with Cesar from uh, uh, Cruiser Tech. Yes, Cruiser yeah, Tech. Tell us about what, what you do. All right, Cruiser Tech, it's a, right now it's a famous shop in Orange County. Awesome. So we are uh, right now the only uh, Toyota Line Cruiser or Toyota shop, especially mm -hmm. just in Toyota Line Cruiser. Yep. So we are rebuilding engine, we do like a custom war, uh, we do some kind of restoration. Yep. Right now we are working with the LS conversion to the 60 series because we know how it's with the AV series. Yes. Uh, but right now we're trying because I know that you like it, keeping it stock Toyota all the time. Right. But there are a couple of things that you can do uh, with your engine to get right. the best performance. So we are wor uh, we're working with a couple company like uh, Mantax Sound System from Australia. Yep. They are helping you a lot with a lot of those uh, AV series. Yep. So right now we have all the that kind of setup that uh, mm -hmm. right now for that reason I'm here I can offer my service it's, uh, if you have yep. you need some help if you are in, in Orange County you can just stop by yep. and we can talk about it so you know Orange County Cruiser Tech yeah if you look at the overland bound member map it is just dense with members yeah. down there so you service a lot of overland bound members yes. right yes. they bring their 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 cruisers in there I can hold you yep. if you want to yep. to do the best thing for that engine but just keep Toyota great no LS swap no 100 series uh, yep. engine conversion the only way is maybe the 60 series because they are pretty old yeah and they in that way you can just do like an LS conversion but with the e-rock because it's permit for like a 15 stay right it's the only way that you can go yep all right my friend awesome okay thank hey, you very much for talking to me yeah you all bet right. <laughs> cool cool hey you guys, if you've never been to Overland Expo, you're gonna get something. You're gonna get mud, you're gonna get snow. This year we got 65 mile an hour wind gusts. Everything's blowing away. And the, the, there, there are, there are uh, 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 entire booths that are just missing. But the Overland Pros awning is still up. It's the only awning up at Overland Expo. Everything else getting blown away. We'll uh, see you, see you tomorrow. <laughs>